Hi, I'm Phyllis. My website is southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make some um, chicken for the dogs and we're going to also make some chicken for some little chicken pot pies. So I'm going to do the chicken in the Instant Pot. So let me move that closer there. All right, so we're going to plug up the pot first. Now, I'm going to do a video about washing meat and poultry here in just a little while, but it's going to be a separate video. So what we've got are some chicken thighs. Now, these chicken thighs were 805 for two, four, six, eight, ten thighs. Now, usually I get the kind that have got the skin on them because it takes like five minutes to get skin off 12 chicken thighs because usually these packs do contain 12. This one only contains 10, plus you're paying at least $2 more per pack because the skin is off the thigh. But this was the only pack they had left, so I really had no choice but to get it. So we're going to put that in the Instant Pot, and I do have my little grate in there, this little thing, because I want to be able to pick them up out of the pot when they get done so they can cool pretty fast. So, I'll show you this. This front part of the chicken thigh is what I'm going to use. It's, I call it like lighter meat. It's what I'm going to use for the uh, chicken pot pies and the rest is going to be for the dogs except for the bone and that little connection thing in between the bone. I don't usually give them that because it's kind of hard. So I'm going to place these with this side down so nothing on here dries out. We're going to put them all in there. I'm not putting any seasoning in and the main reason for that is because I'm going to uh, use this chicken for the dogs. Oh and these are also boneless. I really wanted the bone in them but anyway we're going to go with what we got this time. So I just go ahead and put them all in. Let me turn it up so y'all can see. Just putting them all in. They're right on top of each other. Now what we're going to get out of this is meat for the dogs that I mix with their food, or poultry for the dogs. And also, we're going to get uh, enough so that we can have some chicken pot pies. So I'm going to add about a cup and a half of water and just put my lid on. And we're going to use poultry and it says 15 minutes. Well, we're going much higher than that. Going at least 30 minutes and that that's going to be on high. So we're ready to just leave that. We turn that vent. I can never figure out which way to turn it. Turn it towards the back. Well, we vent it, pulling that little lever towards the front that's right on top right there. Okay, so now we're going to fix this for the uh, dogs and for the uh, chicken pot pies that I'm going to fix. And um, so the next thing you'll see is going to be when I'm taking the chicken apart and dividing it and all that. But in the meantime, I'm going to do a little video, probably five minutes or less, about washing chicken and meat and all that. All right, we'll be back. All right, we are back and the chicken uh, has just gotten finished in the Instant Pot. My little buzzer went off, so we're going to go ahead and vent this now. I do it like this, and y'all, there's nothing dangerous about this. I just use one of those towels, put it over there, because I don't want all that steam in the kitchen, and just turn it off, turn the vent to venting. This needs to go a lot quicker, so that's why I do that. As soon as that little uh, valve goes down, we can take the lid off.
Yeah, you have to be careful because that steam is very hot. No, I didn't get burned, okay? Just, it was hot. Now it's still coming out, so we gotta wait just a minute. Now, what I'm going to do while this chicken is cooling, because I'm gonna take it out and put it in this pan to cool, I'm going to go ahead and cube up, peel and cube three sort of medium potatoes, and I do use the red potatoes, and one very crooked carrot, because that's what I've got. And I'm also going to use some celery. Now this is about a half a stalk of, a, a kind of a long stalk of celery that was previously frozen. So the reason I went ahead and cut it up, because it's much easier to cut it in thin slices when it's frozen. All right, let's see if we're ready now. Nope, not quite. There it went. All right, so my towel here is good and wet, and it smells like chicken, so it definitely goes, oops, definitely goes in the wash. All right, so we're ready to take the lid off now. Set this over here. Alright, so I'm going to see if I can't get all this out at one time. I'm going to actually use part of this towel that I used because it's cool now. There it is. So it's got to cool before I can, uh, I was going to say pick it off the bone, but it doesn't have any bones in it. And by the way, I would never buy the kind that is, has been deboned and the skin's taken off. I, I, I first of all want the nutrients that are coming from the bone, especially when you cook it in the Instant Pot. All right, let me put that right in there. Spread that out so it can be cooling. We're going to go ahead and uh, peel and slice our vegetables and I'm going to take this pot out and let it cool a little bit because we've usually got at least probably two or three cups of chicken broth and I do let that cool a little bit and then strain it on one of those fine mesh strainers. Alright, let me get my vegetables cut up and I'm going to put them on to cook and when that all gets done and we're ready to make the pies we'll show you how we're going to do that. We'll be back. All right, we are back and we got the chicken separated. I used the lighter part of the thigh. And let me just say again, I'd much rather have the chicken with the bone in it, the thigh, and the skin on it. I mean, we, I don't use the skin for anything, but it does keep the uh, underneath part, even in the Instant Pot, much more tender. All right, so we've separated it between the dog's chicken Here's the, we got four cups of chicken broth, and then this is what I'm gonna use for the chicken pies we're gonna make. So for the dogs, I go ahead and freeze this, and what I'm gonna do is put, that's about two tablespoons, maybe a little more of the broth over their chicken, and I freeze that, and um, then in the mornings I just, uh, well, first of all, after it's frozen, I take them all out of these little cups and put them in a freezer bag. That way I have enough for 12 days, and they get this for breakfast usually. And I mix it with some of the dry dog food. And of course, some of this um, chicken broth will soak up in that dog food, and of course they love it. And this just goes right in the freezer. And as soon as it's frozen again, I take it out and put it in a gallon bag. So this is enough breakfast for them for 12 days. And uh, I do divide one of these between the two of them. And then uh, with the chicken broth, what I do, now this has only got a little bit of fat on it. If I had cooked the chicken with the skins on, 
it would be probably an inch of chicken fat on the top. So I put this in the refrigerator, let it all cool, and that bottom part will gel. And of course the chicken fat will get hard on the top. I just always scoop that off. Now there's not much on this, so, and of course the dog's got some of the fat too. So anyway, we'll end up with food for the dogs, and then this will make four little chicken, uh, we'll just call them chicken pot pies, and make them in these. And uh, so we're going to make a cream sauce to go on them and in the vegetables. Took about five minutes for them to get softened. Well, they're pretty much done. So this is uh, the the uh, potatoes cut up in little squares. Can y'all see that? There, that's better. Cut up in little squares. I did uh, cut the carrot long way, so we ended up with just a little half piece of carrot like that because I don't like to get a hold of a whole carrot. And of course the celery's done too. So. We're going to put all this together now. We'll be right back. All right, we are back and ready to put these pies together. So what we've got here, we're going to make a cream sauce to go in the pie filling um, for the uh, little pot pies, we'll call them. So I've got three tablespoons of butter melting. And what we're going to use is 16 ounces of half and half. Now, if you live where uh, they don't have half and half, what it is is half whipping cream and half whole milk. That's all it is. Just use half half whipping cream and half uh, whole milk, and you'll have half and half. Or you could use just regular whole milk, I guess, if you wanted to. So we've got three tablespoons of butter. And I'm adding one fourth cup of flour, which might be a little too much, we'll see. So we're just going to cook this a little bit, just let it get you know, to where it's bubbling. Because that's all we're after, just to barely get it cooked a little bit. Alright, so while that's happening, we're going to go ahead and fill up our little Pyrex bowls. I'm going to just divide everything into four portions. Just put them right in. Now you could also use the uh, little aluminum uh, pie things that you can get. I think you can get those at Dollar General, maybe not Dollar General, uh, dollar, the dollar store. And uh, you could could make them like that if you don't have these little Pyrex dishes. And by the way, my oh, sorry for the scraping on the bowl. Try to get that divide it out evenly. And I did put a little salt in the potatoes, carrots, and celery while they were cooking. Okay, so we just barely got this bubbling, and I'm going to go ahead and add the half and half to it. Yeah, it's going to be a rich filling. Here it is. So we're just going to let that come up almost to a boil and let it thicken up. All right, so now let's put the chicken in. But before we do that, on the chicken, so y'all can see here, I'm going to put some garlic powder. I don't know, about a teaspoon, I guess. And some onion powder. And because of all y'all's comments, several ladies wrote in about the tarragon went really well with chicken. We're doing that too. So let's see, about, about a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons. Let's mix that up. Now I'm not going to put any salt in the chicken because I've got salt in the potatoes, carrots, and celery. 
go use any more salt. All right, so now we're ready to put the chicken in. Just try to divide it out as even as you can. And again, this is going to end up making two meals for us. Now, if you were a single person, this would make four meals for you. And by the way, these do freeze very well, but I would strongly suggest you cook them first and then freeze them, rather than uh, putting them in the freezer and then trying to cook them from a frozen state. around. And by the way, it, it'll, this will make two meals for us and 12 days worth of breakfast for the dogs. Let's mix that up good. I love that ter tarragon. I just love it. It took me all these years to really figure it out. Now, of course, there's no pepper in this. If y'all want pepper, you could certainly put some black pepper in. All right, let's see if we can pick here on the sauce. Yeah, we've got to kind of let this come up to almost a boil. All right, so the pie crust is one of those uh, Pillsbury pie crust like that and it only takes one to cover four of these so what I do is let's see if I can show you I don't know if y'all can see the imprint of the bowl the top of the bowl on top I don't know if that shows up or not but anyway I fit all four bowls on there and then I'm going to cut it right down the middle So you're going to definitely use all the crust. And I've got, did I say this before? I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And I'm putting these on, this is actually a little aluminum pan I sometimes fix biscuits on. Because it just happens to be the right size for the amount of biscuits I fix. But it works well for this too. So what we're going to do is fit the pie crust over there, one-fourth of a pie crust, on each one of the tops of these. So we want this to get thickened up here. All right, so we'll be back as soon as this gets thick, which shouldn't take but a couple more minutes. All right, my little uh, cream sauce is thickened now. We're going to go ahead and pour it over the... Uh, filling mixture here. I might have too much of the sauce, but we'll see. Spatulas are dirty, so and we need a little more in this other one here. chicken and vegetables. Just kind of stir it up from the bottom, really. So, 
all the vegetables and the chicken get some sauce on them. So help uh, cool that sauce a little bit. Now if you want your sauce a little bit thinner, you could just thin it down with some uh, whole milk it would work. one of them so let me move y'all over so you can see how we're doing this hold on all right I tasted of a little bit of this uh, chicken mixture along with the sauce it definitely needs more salt I'll put salt in the vegetables but definitely needs salt because always when you use the uh, half and half or even regular milk you need more salt usually like you know when you're fixing like creamed potatoes and all once you put the cream in there it kind of takes away from any salt that you have we'll just mix that up a little bit again mix that all up good I think that'll do it. All right, we're now ready to put the crust on. And some of y'all have asked me where I got these little white sheets I use. I think these, I know they were from Walmart from many years ago, and I think they were like placemats or something, and I cut them down a little bit so I could use them for, for this type of thing. All right, so we're going to use this whole... Quarter of the crust and what I'm doing is kind of rolling it over and mashing it up against the sides like that. And just put that down and again mashing it up against the sides. Can y'all see that? I don't know. Let me move y'all a little bit closer there. Like that. Okay. So we just kind of roll it over and mash it up against the sides. Because I love the crust. Again, what I'm doing is mashing it right up against the inside of the bowl. Now, if you were using those little aluminum pie plates, you know, the ones that are that look like the same kind of things that TV uh, pot pie or just frozen pot pies come in, those, those containers. All right, ready for the next one. And again, you want to just mash it up against the sides. And just roll over the overage here like that. And we're not going for beauty queen pies, but we are going for great tasting little pot of pies. All right, now, in order for this to work, you're going to have to make vent holes in these. Otherwise, I mean, they might come up a little over the crust anyway, but you want to make a pretty big vent hole right in the middle. That. All right, we're ready to put these in the oven. Now, we're going to cook these 
at 350 degrees and we're going to check, check them after 30 minutes. Let's make sure they're mashed up against the side of the bowl. Now if they do come over or if some of the filling comes out on top of the crust, that's okay too. All right, y'all, they're going in the oven now. We'll see you when these get done and they've cooled a little bit and we're ready to eat. We'll be back then. All right, we just took the uh, little pot pies out of the oven. Now, I did end up turning my heat up to 400. These are Pyrex dishes. And I remember someone making a comment that we shouldn't uh, go over. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm recording in here. He's scratching on my leg. Anyway, uh, so I went ahead and turned it up to 400 degrees. I'm not afraid to do that. But uh, anyway, they cooked right at 30 minutes. And as you can see, the crust got really nice and brown. So we got to let these cool quite a bit before I put them on the plate. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, here's the uh, pot pies on the plate. And we're having that with uh, some of the baby greens. And those are thin sliced apples that have been soaked in uh, raspberry vinaigrette. And that cake is, I believe that's a pumpkin pecan cake from last November. Anyway, I got it out of the freezer and thawed it out. The dogs are in there fighting over toys. And we've got our iced tea, of course. Now I'm gonna try to get the recipe together for this and put it down below in the uh, description or the show more section. And if I can find the video on that cake, I will put a link to that too. Anyway, so here it is. We're getting a lot of meals out of that. And again, let me say, I had much rather use the chicken thighs with the bone in and the skin on. I just think they're better. It takes a little more time to separate everything, but uh, I just think they're better. All right, y'all, there's what the pie looks like. We will see y'all next time. Bye for now.